Who is George Schlatter? Well, besides being my father, he's a radio and television man of the year who has won five Emmys, two Image Awards, a Golden Globe Award, plus awards from the Producers Guild and the TV Academy, as well as having his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He has produced hundreds of hours of television shows and has raised millions of dollars for an endless list of charity affairs and public service events, including the 2001 inauguration of President George W. Bush, because a show in the hand is worth two in the... never mind. My father is the true personification of the phrase, the spirit of life. He is indeed the Wizard of Odd, and it all began many, 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 many years ago. George Hoover Schlatter Jr. was born, as we now know, as an anecdote for the Great Depression in Birmingham, Alabama. Because of his early liberal tendencies and appreciation of people of all color, his family was quickly deported to Webster Groves, Missouri. His father, George Sr., was a traveling salesman and was gone quite a bit. His mother, who was one of the first performing female solo violinists, was often left alone to raise four rambunctious boys. Most of the family outings were devoted to taking George to the hospital for exploding fireworks in his pants, blowing himself up with gasoline, or simply falling off of rooftops. At Webster Groves High School, Corky, the mad lover, Schlatter, was thought to have a promising football career until he was diagnosed with polio. George was told he would never walk again. Pretending the doctors were network executives, George set out to prove them wrong. The thought of going from athlete to athletic supporter was more than he could bear. Against all odds, George fully recovered, except for his one middle finger, which has a tendency to raise when he gets pissed off. The doctors did turn out to be right about George never walking again. He's been running ever since. At 17, George was the youngest member of the St. Louis Municipal Opera. When a road show took him to California, his family soon followed. After college, the call of the wild nightlife beckoned, and George entered showbiz as a runner in the mailroom at MCA. But it wasn't long before he became a talent booker and got the Ciro's and Las Vegas Frontier Hotel accounts. At the Frontier, George convinced Sammy Davis Jr. to come back to perform after his accident by guaranteeing that Sam could enter through the front door, stay in the hotel, and that blacks would be allowed to come see the show. While auditioning showgirls at Ciro's, one day a beautiful brunette walked in. She couldn't sing, she could barely dance, but ah, what a smile. George put her in the middle of the line. Some say it was the first and last time Jolene ever towed the line. George asked Jolene to marry him, and she said yes, if you get out of saloons and gambling joints and into television. He said, I'm working on it, trust me. In less than a year, George went to NBC's talent department and started booking for the Dinah Shore show, while Jolene did Clean for a Day, Zorro, Gunsmoke, and eventually the Ernie Kovac show. George is actually married to the woman that all of America has seen in the bathtub. Jolene was also the piano player in the Nairobi Trio, and upon seeing Jolene in a gorilla suit, George got her pregnant with me, Maria. NBC presents Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. George's career exploded when his show Laugh-In took over Monday nights and became the conscience of a nation. The winner is Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In Thank you. Don't be nervous, George. Just get around. Step right in. Give uh, Go ahead, George. Uh, Shay, this is not going to take long. Partying at the factory, motorcycle riding with the McQueens, George and Jolene were rocking and rolling to the 60s beat when my sister was born. They named her Andrea, which is Native American for girl of many hair color. Growing up in a household filled with boys was not rough at all compared to dealing with three very strong women on a daily basis. Dealing with strong personalities is one of George's major skills. He is still the only man alive who has uttered these words, 
Uh, Frank, do you think you can do that one more time? With his humor and wit, George always seems to bring out the best in whoever he's working with, because he brings his best to the event. And every show that George does is always an event.